Porter Podcast. Hello. Jesus, Louise. You sound Buff. great. That was great. <laughs> yeah, it sounds fine. Goodness gracious, y'all. We just jumped through some hoops. Those are just the hoops that we choose to jump through. I'll choose to jump through those hoops over any other hoops in the world. Hoop jumper. Hoop jumper. Hula hoopa. Big. Yeah, dude. Hidden jumpers. It, it reminds me, every time Golly. it reminds me of being a kid with my dad. Just, we did that like three times a week. <laughs> just, just like YouTube and tutorials well, and shit. Yeah, like Google a yeah, lot. Yeah, but yeah, YouTube wasn't like. Uh, super pre- prevalent. When I was in high school, I think that's when you realized you could YouTube anything. Mm. You're like how to do anything in your car was on YouTube. I feel like when I was in elementary school, it was a little more like we had. It wasn't to, quite there yet. Yeah, we we're trying to you had to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Looking at instruction manuals and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A whole bunch of chat rooms and forums and shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's where the truth is. Sometimes, bro, go to Reddit. You'll find some truth in Reddit. Real talk. That's like the pe- the voice of the people live on Reddit. That's like their brand, right? Kinda. At least that's what I associate Reddit with. <laughs> yeah, it is because everything's upvoted, so it's like to have. Yeah, it's like monitored. Yeah, it's truly it's policed. <laughs> there's no like Google works because people pay money, and it's a combination of like money and traffic that creates a top search result. Mm-hmm. But a top search result in Reddit is strictly based on positive upvotes, which are supposed merit, to merit typically. Yeah, yeah, merit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Sorry. and any if you just Google my problem Reddit, like my thing won't work reddit and you go through the reddit results because you'll see like the post question then you'll see like several people trying to answer the question Mm -hmm. or sometimes you'll just see like someone at the top top comment like the actual solution yeah and then everybody underneath that is like thank you big stew thank you big stew (laughs) big stew's the best yeah and it's for press right but some people would maybe misunderstand the question have the wrong answer all sorts of shit that would something irrelevant yeah or yeah it's like out, outdated or... i have this problem too you don't want to have to scroll through a bunch of those you know <laughs> yeah yeah man just problem solving creatures but it's stressful that's what i was it gonna is. say it is it feels nice now yeah. it's like super relieved <laughs> it's like super chilling it's like golly that took so long that was such that was such a trek such a trek we always figure it out we made it happen. We, we made it, it happen. The thing we made happen, y'all, is we got Joe Rogan esque up in this motherfucker. We got we did. We got the wireless HDMI into the TV. We got the ability to capture the capturing the TV currently. So we got the video to overlay within this video whenever we're bringing stuff up or watching videos or looking up things on Google, whatever that happens to be. And then we also have that audio routed to the headphones and also an audio track routed to the. Uh, audio doll. doll yeah yeah the audio doll that captures all the audio so now it's its own audio track and then we had to jump through some hoops to make sure that it wasn't capturing all the audio at the same time and playing back everything over each other and making it sound like robots hell in a handbasket <laughs> <laughs> it's nitty-gritty it's nitty-gritty and it gets way complicated if you get too far into it gets crazy what's what You're like, we were trying what? to download a thing and it was like i had to like download like the fucking script or like type in the damn code myself <laughs> For one of these things, I'm like, nah, I'll Something think that's it. That's probably not it. Ended up being something that we already had access to, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like, you had, you had the treasure right there. You're already good. <sighs> Preach. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a witness. The people without focus right have to do use. some other shit. But we jump like, through a different set of hoops. Golly. Their they, own individual, uniquely tailored set of hoops. <laughs> My gosh, because yeah, if someone, if two people have the same exact problem, they're going to go about it two completely individual. They might be similar, but they're going to be completely individualistic routes forward of how to handle that problem, even if the problem's exactly the same thing. True. Just based on how you interpret the world. Exactly. How you view things. What's your viewpoint? And then that, how you view the world is going to impl- uh, in, in, like intra- intricately work itself into how you act out problem solving or passage of time. To a better time. It's like, oh, we're in now time. Oh, now time has problems. Okay, we need to get to over these problems times. And then you overcome the problems and you're, oh, okay. Now we're in better times. Yeah. And we have the information, the knowledge, and the wisdom of how to overcome that problem or a similar problem in the future. It's like, yes, much better. Subconscious nice. problem solving meta strategy. Yeah. It's like, how do you go about? Yeah, we all have our own gears working on how to figure out our problems. Yes. You know? So even if we have the same exact problem, someone has the same exact equipment and setup, they might have gone through a different route instead of hoops and google searches that led them to different a different outcome or whatever but we, yeah. we found that this shit works for us right now it's tight it's working praise god it's nice when you get the Thank internet god. back on it's just like oh uh, yeah yeah that wasn't our problem but it's kind of the same feeling yeah oh man it's nice yeah man 
I want to. I don't want to get too too meta on this one. I want to keep it a little more tangible. That's cool. A little more here. A little more right here with it. Present. We're in clothing. On a Clothes couch. are here. On a couch in an, in an apartment in Texas. Yeah. Here we go. Live. We're well, not live. Boom. But might as well be live. Yeah, man. What's going on in life? Football's happening. That's the big thing that's going on right now for sure. School's happening. Yeah. Summer is August over. time. Summer is coming to a close. Semesters are starting back up. Back to school. Yeah. I love this time. Yeah, I, was, I was talking to you about this before, but I just like, like this time of year. The same way that some people love the holidays or some people love whatever, like summertime, July 4th or Valentine's, whatever. Whatever time of the seasons appeal to you in your story. But this time in life, I like this time in life a lot. It just hits because our birthdays are right around this time. It's like right before the holiday season truly starts to pick up and ramp up around Halloween. It's like we, still, we this is our own little pocket. It's like summer's coming to a close. New beginnings are truly starting to emerge. It's like all the work that you put in the summer is like now you're in the reaping season. We're about to hit into some reaping season as far as just kind of like the seasonality of spirituality or whatever, however you want to say that. It's like spring, summer, fall, winter. It's like spring's new beginnings in the summer. You're working during the summer and then you reap in the fall and then you take what you reaped and then you withstand the winter and then you get to another cycle again, do it again. But I like this jumping into the, or out of the summer into the fall time. We're like right into that transition. This is like August, mid mid to late August into September. It's like, all right, September, we're like, it's fall vibes. Some places it's like starting to get orange and yellow, you know, not here, not in Texas. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. It's its own beauty. You feel it it's its own beauty. It's, it's a choir hot. taste. What's that? There's more grass for sure. Yeah, it's a little less hot. Yeah. It's a little less hot, a little less humid. We got a lot of rain this summer. Yeah. Yeah, what's it? We, right? It rained a lot. Yeah. I remember it raining like every third day or so. Every three days. It was the like month of rain. July. It was definitely yeah. raining a lot. It was nice. Yeah, it's hurricane season. You were saying, uh, did those seasons... The seasons? Like we reap in the fall, we sow in the spring... Are you talking about like in the past we did that? Yeah, I think that that might be like the method or like uh, I guess kind of how we survived or I guess it's like farming maybe. Yeah. You know, it's like planting in the spring, working in the summer, reaping in the fall. Then hopefully you have enough food to last you through the winter when you can't plant anything. Do you think if I think that's metaphysically true as well. Oh. Not to get too meta. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to walk Farmers. <laughs> soil. Hands in the dirt. Yeah. Feet on the ground. Earth. <laughs> literally feet on the ground as i talk about something a million miles in the air yeah metaphysical abstract concepts but yeah that's what i was going to say is do you think that the idea of fall is prevalent in your life is it do we always sow in the spring i think maybe... everybody work hard in the summer kids aren't working hard in the summer no <laughs> yeah maybe that follows more just like a truly like farmer schedule back in the day yeah that was the purpose of daylight savings time i guess during that summer portion like in the springtime we increased the length of day that we get to work with we can talk about something tangible right here yeah, here we go they were the backbone of the damn country because <laughs> that's why they changed the whole time system right because it was important we need to have important enough as time mm -hmm. it's also like wealth in our country we grew a ton of agriculture yeah we could feed our own country at a time when other countries had a, like struggled with that but now we're in a weird place where we're like the real estate economy and big corporate, I guess like agriculture or food mm -hmm. aggregators. Yeah. They like farmers are like going out of business. Like true American farmers are going out of business, like left and right all over the place. I don't know any of the, like the stats on that, but I'm sure they're appalling. They're appalling for sure. I'm sure. I, I don't have them either. <laughs> I just seen enough TikTok and, and documentaries to like know that that's true. Mm -hmm. And it's just like crazy, man. It's just why did they? Why would we do that? Why would we get rid of? Why would we not bolster up the fucking people making our food here in this country? It might just be as simple as profit, you know, trying to turn a buck, trying to get as much money as possible out of anything and everything. And China makes cheaper food. <laughs> it's like for fuck's sake, man. Yeah, right. What are we talking about here? We owe them money, or we're just printing money and paying them back money we owe them with money we print. It, it's all pretty fucked, dude. Politics is f fucked right now. The money thing the is board. crazy. Yeah, because I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how the all those companies, agricultural companies, farmers, are they companies? Are they businesses? If you're a farmer or if you're a, I guess if, if you're like a distributor of Wagyu beef, like you're, you're definitely selling that shit. Yeah. But like, are how many farmers out there? Farmers in, in get the their own kind of tax coding. And they have their own, they're in their own 
thing. Yeah. It's a different kind of person. Yeah, and they used to give tax breaks to people that were making food. Mm-hmm. And they would get like... You can get tax breaks if you have a certain amount of land with livestock on it or like animals on it, like goats and chickens and shit. So I think it turned into that. At first, we were boosting the farmer community up and like get, I think we were trying to not overtax them and like allow them to create food for America. Us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to keep life going. I was thinking about that yesterday. I was like, man, I have to eat. Like I have to eat. If I'm not careful, I won't eat. Like I have to put it into the schedule. You know what I'm saying? Dude, get <laughs> Make a sandwich. Like <laughs> Eat that sandwich. Like <laughs> Yeah. It's the execute command. You could not, but you're too disciplined. But also, life just mm-hmm. gets terrible. Like, your condition, yeah. your perception, your Man. experience it gets shitty. Yeah, experience sucks if you're hungry. If you're, like, super hungry. Yeah. Start to, yeah. But, but sorry, we're talking about farmers. Trying to bolster them up. Yeah. Because it's important. And then we started taxing the crap out of farms. And, like, having death taxes. And what? like Yeah, like. I think we talked about this on a pod like a year and a half ago. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> we talked about the farmers because you have farmer roots in Indiana. Yeah. Your family. So then like when my grandfather passed away <coughs> to like have the farm go down, like for someone else to inherit the farm, you have to pay like a tax on like a fifth of the farm. Just like, it's like a death tax, like an inheritance tax just to take it over. So that means like a lot of farmers would it's just lame. end up selling. Like if you were just like broke or like don't even know how, like let's just say your dad was just doing everything and you just get the farm and you're like not really like ready to handle all that, but you have to inherit it. And you have your own financial burdens that you've accrued through your own life story. And then it's just like, here's an additional, whatever the farm is worth, like 20% of that. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. That's a lot. So a lot of people just sell 20% of the land and then pay the inheritance tax with that. With that. And then keep whatever's left over. Mm. But then you lose 20% of your land. Yeah. And that's just like happened over the last 50 or 60 years. Until there's like no, not enough room. Yeah. They all got smaller. And then once yeah. they get smaller, the profits go down and the taxes went up. And then it's like, shit's fucked. Yeah. That's fucked. Yeah. That's fucked. I don't know what we're doing. I don't know what we're doing, <laughs> to be honest with you. What are we talking about here, y'all? Dude, this thing is tight. The this mic, mic arm? It's sick, right? <laughs> yeah, well, we're leveling up. We got some extra blue lights in the back. Come on, y'all. It's fucking... It's, it's next... It's the new chapter, bro. That's all I'm talking about. Bringing it back to what I was talking about. Thank you. It's the new season. I love this time of year. It's like the, the new school year is always such a hitter for everyone, you know? Like, that was that's our, that's your life whenever you're 5 to 18, five, or go to college 5 to 22, whatever. It's like you're doing that for a long time. Like, a long time. This means a lot to a lot of people. This time of year... We call it August, but what the fuck's happening? You know? There we go. Now we're talking. <laughs> it's a, I think there's something going on there. Because I think because we were talking about, yeah, like the seasonality, is there like a true, maybe like a spiritual aspect to that? But I think maybe you do kind of reap and sow every day, maybe, you know what I'm saying? Moment by moment, you're reaping and sowing. Maybe it happens at every, every scalable increment of time. You know what I'm saying? Like millisecond, second, hour, day whatever you know what I'm saying week and expand it all the way over the course of your life yeah. maybe we're experiencing all those karmic action reactions with like the maturation cycle of the karmic action so sometimes it's like it happened yesterday so it's hitting today sometimes it happened a week ago it's hitting a week from now i don't, I don't know how long things take to rubber band back into reality yeah, yeah but that's yeah. also happening at some rate from all of your past that you've lived and then you're sending some into the future with all the ones you're doing right now mm-hmm. creating this big loop that you're walking in all the time <laughs> the cyclone of crazy shit so i think you are on, a, on, on on that aspect you're definitely reaping and sowing all the time but i think there maybe there is a, maybe there's some truth to the to the idea that maybe there's a spiritual seasonality of things in your life and i guess yeah we're talking about springtime being the planting the summertime being the i guess the work and the fall time being the reaping and the reap what you sow What's going on there? Yeah. So I think there is truth to that, though. I don't know. I, I just feel that in my, like, I think I think that's right. I think there is something true to it. I'm not sure the degree to which, but, or how exactly it works. But it makes sense in my mind. I, I accept that it's true. I think my own book of philosophy and belief. Give it to me. Right there where you're talking about, there's a spirit of summer that does exist with us. And maybe it's just an echo of our ancestry's memory that we had to work all summer so that we could survive through the winter and like that that song plays in the background of our life now too Mm -hmm. so if you can lean into working really hard all summer there's a song that's already playing at that melody and at that beat and at that frequency and so when you do work all summer because like 
you know, for me, like I remember in high school, I was working out really hard all summer because football was in the fall. Mm -hmm. So the only time you could really get like, you could do like a full bulk or you could really like focus and change your body was over the summer. And then there's just something about the dog days of summer, mm -hmm. working hard when it's hot and you're sweaty and you just kind of get over. You're just like, I don't, give, I don't even care. <laughs> Dump the water all over my face. It's yeah, it's hot. I know. In the muck. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's something real nice and beautiful and you, you feel like you almost overcome the spirit of that, that it's too hot or it's too much or adversity almost in that sense. Yeah. It's like, we have to get this done. We have to plant these. We have to tend the field. We right? have to. And you could spend all summer inside avoiding the heat, not wanting to work. Maybe you're like a college student and you don't you don't mind working when campus is open, but you try not to work during the summer so you can just relax and have fun. And like, you know, I could see that too, but you're just missing an opportunity <clears throat> that's out there. Mm -hmm. there. There's a dance to be. You have this time off or like, yeah, you have this, you've been given this. I guess you can go to summer school, but maybe yeah, the, even going to summer school is like fucking working hard in the summer. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because you're like, you're doing extra. You're like, this, it, t school's not right now. Like. I'm going anyway, bitch. Like, yeah. I'm fucking getting this shit done. Grind. Right? Yeah. I was just thinking in my mind, like, going a little deeper. It's like, maybe there is something true to it because it does line up more so with, like, the, the farming agricultural side of seasonality. And the importance of it is, like, the, the truth that we need fucking food. We need that. Like, it's important. And I think we are, like, mentally, spiritually planting seeds all the time. All the time. And, like, that same thing is happening. You know, I think maybe like or it just struck me that maybe it is like that the, the thing that I'm identifying within it as true is I, calling to me as true because like of the link to the like it's, it's it's like food. It's like you need it's it's that important to you. It's like this planting of seeds and reaping of what you're sowing and tending the field of your mental garden and your spiritual garden. It's like that is as important, if not more important than the actual food that you're eating that goes through the seasonality as well in your physical world. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh. That might be true. That might be deep. And I'm saying it, and it sounds right. <laughs> it does sound right. It feels right. It does feel right. It's beautiful. Yeah, your spiritual garden, your mental garden. What thoughts are you thinking? What are you trying to grow? Like, we've been trying to bloom MJ38 for fucking ever, bro. You know what I'm saying? Dude, I'm tripping right now because I was, like, caught in a daydream of thought, and I came back, and you're talking about the same thing. Woo! That was trippy. Because, <laughs> yeah, because you can't help but, like... uh We're always planting something. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. So like... And watering, tending something, giving it your energy, giving it your... And you get to that next moment, and then there's what you had watered and fostered and grown behind that. Mm -hmm. Kind of like bolstering it up and supporting it, and then Monster leaking flowers. through in its influence. No, we Gucci. Okay, cool. But sorry, yeah, hold on. We'll... Uh... We'll re revamp it back to that thought, but what we uh, what were you saying? Sorry. <laughs> no, you're great. Uh, you're always planting something. Oh, you were talking, yeah. and then I was thinking in my own mind about how, like, uh, I think that that's that's kind of like how you can feel good about something, is because if you were trying to do it the right way and really trying to have like a positive outcome and you you're like almost grooming this thought of like trying to do it the right way and then the adversity comes up and then you choose to do it the right way it feels really good because you kind of like already had that mental pathway for it and mm. i think that there's something about like when you get into the moment and then there's like the moment where you could cut the corner since you had that influence in those thoughts of like i want to not cut the corner i want to not cut the corner then you just like are able to achieve the thing that you wanted yeah execute the action that you would say that deemed desirable that. yeah it meets that demand but it would take some of that like or if you had the the opposite going like you're growing negative self-belief mm -hmm. or self-doubt doubt yeah then you get to that moment and you're just like oh i'm just cutting this corner fuck this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I could see that like yeah, yeah, yeah. And that moment that you talk, yeah, that fork in the road moment where it presents you with the opportunity to do one or the other. I feel that sometimes. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes you can feel the severity of it. Yeah. Where you're just like, that one was easy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, in my mind, I've always mentioned this before, but like walk, walking on the ground, pick up some trash. You know what I'm saying? Pick up some trash. And then like, I just, sometimes it's easier than others. Or, you know, sometimes it's just like, whoop, real, real quick and easy. It's like right on the way to the, to the path I'm already walking. There's a trash can right there, A to B easy but then there's like i don't know 
like that, that mental battle that the forks will come up where it's the, uh, the opportunity to like cut the corner or do the thing or to not do the thing. And then like, I will have, sometimes I'll like turn around and walk back to go, you know what I'm saying? I'll be on my way this way. And I was like, no, 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 I'll cut it off. And then like, sometimes I'll just go back and pick it up. Yeah. And there's like a limit to it. You know what I'm saying? There's like practicality and I'm living life. I have shit I got to do. I got places I got to be, obligations I got to meet. But there's, there's something there, you know, sometimes the opportunity gets harder and a little bit more nuanced and a little bit deeper, a little bit more intricate. Yeah. It's like how now it's like faith test or not even faith, but whatever, you know, it's asking you how far are you willing to go to uphold this ide- ideal sometimes? Yeah. How much do you believe yeah. in this? It's like, Oh, the cup's kind of dirty. Oh, <laughs> there's ants on that. Oh, I'm going to pick it up anyways. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I felt that where it's like, oh, all right, get to the trash can. The trash can is just like overflowing with trash. And it's like trying to make it so difficult on me. You know? <laughs> right. Okay. But I want to get back to that ethereal feel that we were talking about uh, for the seeds of just of the spring, summer, fall, winter. Okay. Yeah, yeah. How you can like kind of like almost feel those mm-hmm. because like, here's another thing. What are you supposed to do in the winter time by this theory that we're examining? Uh, Called your perspective. Yeah, it's you reap in the fall, and then you like withstand the winter, or like you know, what I'm saying, cuddle up. <laughs> it's gonna get cold outside. Get cozy and eat the food. Have enough food to last you until you can start planting food again. Right. I guess that's the idea. In our industry, though, it's like slower in the summer and busy. Yeah, in restaurant the winter. industry is a little different because yeah, winter time everybody's coming through. Yeah. No, October, Cats. November, December. Those that that last quarter. Restaurants be hitting it in that last quarter, y'all. I'm telling you. Right. I guess it depends on where you're at. Whatever. Whatever industry you're in, location you're at. Right. But, but typically, it seems to me that end of year parties, Christmas parties, holiday parties, all that. And end of year business, or not business, but yeah, like business you have events. family in town. Yeah. Yeah. Every, families are in town. You want to take them out. You're in town. You're going to go out somewhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of reasons why it pops off at that time. For those time. people, that's almost, that was like almost my summer a couple of years ago was like working really hard from October through January one. Yeah. Cause that was where make hay while the sun's shining, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bex. So yeah, that, that definitely applies to that industry. So in that sense, sure. that is counterintuitive to our belief that maybe the grind would be over the summer. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that, um, I guess that's what I'm saying is where, yeah, what's your summer, right? It's like your yeah. Friday isn't necessarily Friday if you your off days are Wednesday and Thursday. Your yeah. Friday would be Tuesday. And maybe it's just like, uh, it just goes in that order of like spring, summer, fall, winter. But like, it's just one, two, three, four. And like, sometimes you're in phase two, but it's December. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So maybe there's something like that. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Outside Boom, the, that's beautiful. the months. Because yeah, that, make, that makes more sense. Because you can't, you can't, it gets weird. It gets weird because if you're working hard because it's summer or phase three or whatever that, mm-hmm. the sun is shining, so let's make hay. Then like the only way you're making hay is if there's like an average you're doing more than. Yeah, right. Right? Yeah. And we, for whatever reason, I mean, should we just do summer year round? Should we just be working at the more than all the time? I don't think it's possible. Yeah, maybe, I guess we, we literally couldn't when they were like in the farming analogy. You know, because like the, the land's not ready or like it's not time. The, the 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 whole orchestra of the matrix is not going to allow that to happen. It's like the law of gravity or Timing. like the laws of yeah physics, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just not going to happen. So that's not it's not time. You can't plant in the. In the I guess you could. Maybe this, we maybe we probably find out the hard way. It's like trying to plant in the in the fall or plant in the uh, December in the winter time, and we're like, oh shit, this shit ain't growing. This is impossible. We probably tried to maintain summer throughout the entirety of the year and found out the heart. We lost all of our seeds. We lost generations because of that shit. Our greediness. <laughs> Son of a bitch. This is beautiful. We're touching it. This is beautiful. We're touching it, y'all. Because- <laughs> <laughs> Trying to keep our feet on the ground, but I'm Go touching on. it. So I yeah. can- <laughs> Clothing. <laughs> on earth is where we're at. Bring us back. But we're talking about farms. Talking about spirituality. Seasonality. The idea of summer. The idea of summer. Working hard. We can't, yeah, but you're a great point. You can't, I guess, yes, make, sh- make hay while the sun is shining. More ec- more work output during this time, whenever more work output, I guess, yeah, make, like, to be more more than the average. Because, yeah, there's maybe throughout the rest of the year, you can't do it. It's just not, you can't do it. It's not sustainable. 
it's not sustainable, but maybe you need to have a season in your life span of time where you just fucking hit it hard. Whatever you're doing, whatever you're hitting in your life, if you're going to the gym, if you're going to school, if you're going to work, whatever your profession, whatever you're studying, you could hit it hard. Everyone knows what it fucking means to hit it hard. You wake up early and you cut the bullshit. Like <laughs> that's it. Plug away. You wake up early, cut the bullshit, get shit done. Smell the coffee. Yeah. Smell the fucking roses <laughs> and the coffee. Coffee roses. <laughs> Rose coffee. Rose coffee. Coming to you soon. Come on. Chocolate roses in your coffee. It's fire. I'm sorry. Everyone knows what that means. Or like that, that feeling of like, all right, it's time to fucking go. Yeah, put your boots on. It's time to fucking go. Big boy panties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're real non binary with that one. Yeah. No, uh-huh. but yeah, uh-huh. it's like cliche, uh-huh. you know, we all know. Yeah, so there has to be maybe uh, an average that you're maintaining throughout the the course of the year, but then there should be give yourself a couple months here and there, or maybe it might not even be like that. Just like the true seasonality of like the fucking rotation around the sun, how that creates our seasonality for real, for real. But life has something like that where you need to step it up for a little bit, or like a fucking put it in, put in some work right here. Yeah, get this shit done. Whatever the thing is you're trying to get done. It's hard to find an internal clock for me because I'm always trying to fucking. Step it up, step it up. Then it's like, what's happening next, guy? Step it up, yeah. Like, wait, step it up, <laughs> like, god damn, boy. That's how I feel sometimes. But the thing that makes a marathon possible is that it's gonna end. That's I'm, like, that is a crucial part of this whole thing. Like, mm. I, mm. You got to know that it's gonna end to have the motivation and the willpower to do extra or to do something that's outlandish, you know, to take on extra stuff or to keep going at all. Right? You know what I'm saying, yeah. If you're just running a race, but you don't even know you're running a race. I, I don't know how you maintain pace. Or it's like, oh, I'm fucking tripping. Or like, you know, I'm, I'm getting thrown. It's like the idea of the marathon you just brought up, like opened up a door of idea that it's like life is our, like a bridge that gap of, or connected the, like life is like a marathon kind of analogy. But then like, you don't, like we, we know we're running a race to a degree. Maybe we know subconsciously and only subconsciously at first. And then we become consciously aware, like, oh, we're going to die. Like for real. Like this race is going to end. Yeah. It's actually going to end. Uh-huh. But if you're not like, like to keep going, it's like to know that it's going to end is what keeps you going and to yeah. keep, that motivates you to do more, to fucking go as hard as you can. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To try to try to run a good race. Yeah. Do it tastefully. Run a good race. At the end of it, it's going to end and you're going to have to look back on it. Uh-huh. It's like, how was that race? How'd you do? It's like, I ran my fucking ass off. I left it all out there. Nothing else I could have done more. Right. In the training, and the prep, and the pre work, and everything I put into it, and then the race itself, like I, I did it. I left it all out there. Right. So hopefully you can do that with your life. You know, that's that would be nice. It'd be awesome. That's the thing we're what we're all aiming for. Hopefully, subconsciously. Yeah, you don't want to be like about halfway through. I just fucking mentally gave up. Oh yeah, I was done. I walked the rest of it. It's like fuck, dude. Yeah, because I guess in the metaphor of the life, like you're not gonna, you're in a DQ, I guess. You do, you do, you do get DQ'd even if you're not moving. That joke is dark. I didn't want to. Yeah. <laughs> Halfway through, I called the taxi. You got DQ'd, <laughs> but it's gonna end, man. Fuck. But yeah, so that was a little tangent thought. A little tangent thought about marathon life. Marathon. Work hard. Keep pushing. We're talking about that. Work hard. Keep pushing. Because you're talking about the uh, the idea of knowing that the marathon is going to end is part of what gives you the relief and the the will to keep you going. You just have to. Yeah. The, maybe I'm just a weak person. But the, <laughs> like to tap into infinite willpower, there has to be some kind of like, how long am I doing it for? Because it's like, it is its own place for a reason. Like, I can't have the infinite willpower all the time. I mean, like, I can, I can tap into it all the time. But part of the access into it is the, the longevity that I'll be in there for. That's what like grants me the access to do it. You know, hmm. it's something about um. I don't, I don't want to get too biblical, but it, it just reminds me of like the crucifixion or like suffering in general. Hmm. It's like, could you suffer forever if it was never going to end? Wouldn't you freak out? You know what I'm saying? Or give up? Sounds or terrible. Die? Like yeah, but sounds terrible. I think uh, you can suffer for you can suffer intensely if you know how long it's going to be for and find that bargain like negotiable within your own spirit. Hmm. And then suffering can just look like working overtime for a month. You're like, all right, just one month. I'm going to do the month. I'm going to get in. I'm going to get out. But if all of a sudden you were working overtime every day and you like weren't down for it and they're like, that's just the shift now. Yeah. <laughs> like, wait, oh, fuck. what? You yeah. Have to, like, reevaluate what you're doing there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think to not reevaluate what you're doing there in your own conscious coding for it to truly be acceptable, you'd have to know like this isn't a forever thing. Hmm. Mm, I right. got to, I got to that point with um just, you know. Sometimes like lifting weights, if I'm just like lifting really heavy for like a long period of time, it gets to a point where it's like, is this just normal? Am I still lifting heavy? Or is is this it feels heavy, it feels heavy as fuck. But is normal just like lightweight or am I tripping there is like a more normal regulated pace of lifting and then I can step it back up to like, okay, I'm going heavy for a little bit and bring it back down to normal. And then I was just like getting beat the fuck up. Like I'm tired all the time and I'm just like, nah, you're a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like hungry all the time. But it's just like, I, I kind of had to remember like, oh yeah, this is like, there's a, there's a pace and a level that's like enough for me to like get better. Like it's hard. It's difficult, but I'm not killing myself for it. Mm-hmm. And then there's the extra the I'm doing, ideal pace, yeah, right. And but this is to, to, to some degree unsustainable. I wrote a bar about it. It's like motherfucker, maintain the unsustainable, mm-hmm. make it look easy. You know what I'm saying? Like that. That's that's a gift and a curse to make unsustainable look easy. It's mm-hmm. like, well, isn't that easy for you? Like, no, it's unsustainable, dog. It's unsustainable. It's, it's, it's cracked. <laughs> yeah, it's crack shit. <laughs> but I can do that. Yes, I can do that, and I can do it for a marathon pace. I can give you 26 miles. Mm-hmm. But at some point, at some point, it's gotta stop. That's yeah. the only way this whole function works is if I know that marathon's going to end. Mm-hmm. And I got I got that way with like, you know, working in a restaurant, doing customer service. Mm-hmm. It's just like, I love it. I love doing it. But like part of the being overly stressed for so long is knowing that we were going to find a way out of that mechanic, out of that system. Yeah, that was always, always known. Yeah, right. Oh, man, what the hell are we, what is anyone choosing to do? You know, you have to really want to do it, right? Yeah. Fuck. That's the it. That's the thing. Because <laughs> what makes the other thing, un- why was it unsustainable for you to work a job? Yeah. <laughs> you, you selfish, lazy fuck. What are you talking about, you lazy bitch? Yeah, it's unsustainable you to work, work a job. work hard, huh? <sighs> to work a difficult job that's taxing and requires a lot of you, almost all of you sometimes, it's like that. You gotta really want to do it. You gotta really want to do it. Like doctors, lawyers... Fucking people who are putting in 70, 80 hours a week and whatever they're doing, you got to really want to fucking do that. Like, who's out here doing 70 hours of anything a week? Because I'll tell you what, if you're being a lawyer 70 hours a week for 40 years and you're just telling yourself one day it's going to end, 40 years from now I'm going to be rich, but I hate this law shit. Mm-hmm. That's a that's harder than running a marathon, bro. <laughs> that's, that's a long ass race to suffer through. Yeah, that's a long one. No one would see that's there's a thing going on. I, I feel it in my own heart and okay. it's hard for me to say it out loud. Uh-huh. But there's a there's a thing we won't agree with. For it to be agreeable, truly agreeable, you have to want to do it. And if it's not truly agreeable, the force of nature of you will start to wreak havoc on yourself. I don't think it'll necessarily be self-destruction, but your matrix will become chaotic hmm. because you're living in chaos internally because you don't really want to do it. Yeah, yeah. Your your suffering will manifest outside, and the you inside of you, the subconscious that knows you have unlimited potential to do anything in the world, will say, "Why are we doing this? Yeah, why yeah. the fuck are we doing this? <laughs> this sucks. Yeah, this sucks. Get me out." Mm-hmm. And like that. So, but because it's like, why? Why not? Why not just be okay doing too much? Why? Why don't we just raise the standard on everybody so that the too much is normal? <laughs> And the reason is too much. (laughs) (laughs) Quite simply put. (laughs) But the thing that tells you that, the thing that that makes you know that, the thing that lights that light up that says, too much. (laughs) You ever seen The Office when (laughs) Michael's going to move in with Dwight? Maybe, I'm sure. Michael I've gets, seen it. Michael but. gets to his condo, and the condo's way more than he thought it was going to be. She's like, well, you can always sublet out a room or something like that. And he's like, Dwight, I've decided to make you an incredible offer. (laughs) I'm going to let you be my roommate. Dwight's like, I don't want to fucking live with Michael. <laughs> I live on a farm. Mm-hmm. And so he starts being like, oh, man, this is going to be great for my, my jazz band sessions. He's like, what are, these, what are these fire alarms like? And he's just being so obnoxious. And Michael just gets to a point where he goes, ah, wrong, over, no more. And that just lives in my head as like a, there's a moment where someone will just go, oh, right, right, right. <laughs> done <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the too much the too much okay but sorry we're talking about the the thing that identifies that or allows that to be true within you like how, how do we it, there's a there's a define it i think it's 
there's a flow of energy <clears throat> that like okay it's like almost like a self monitoring system that knows like what what homeostasis is or what's acceptable or what's okay where you're really happy homeostasis with. harmony yeah harmony right harmony. and if yeah. you're gonna have me play over then and for true harmony we'd have to go back under at some point yes and that's the problem with overtraining is because you might relapse and undertrain for the next six weeks yeah or injure yourself it's not sustainable you can't go to fight camp all year round right you only go for like six weeks or whatever however long sorry ufc people but you know what i'm talking about yeah my friend the fighter said max holloway talk about it yeah well what did he say yeah he's like you can't like we hit it hard bro but like you have to if you're gonna be hitting it that hard you need to recover really hard too because it's it's damaging like it's fucking you're gonna beat the fuck up every day twice a day for weeks on end with like killers so like you need to be like you can't do that forever you only need to you only need fight camp like like I think maybe he, that's why he was. I, I can't remember exactly how in reference or what he was context he was using it in or talking about it with. Yeah. But he was. I think he just like said you can't maintain fight camp for that long. Maybe because uh, could be because some of the younger younger other fighters in his camp or other fighters that he knows like maybe have that mentality of like do more, do more, do more, raise the standard, do more, do more. Yeah. He's like you can't do that. Yeah. It's not it's not sustainable and it's not going to help you. It's like it's it's kind of it's counterintuitive. You need to do a little bit less. Like you do you do need when it's time to go you need to go. Yeah. Like full, full, like to the wall. Yeah. But when it's not time to go, you need to also not go like full force to the wall. Like recover, rest, take it easy. To fucking account for the harmony and the homeostasis that's the universe wants. That homeostasis is what allows all this to be. You know what I'm saying? Like the balance, the fine balance of everything. Like all the, the distance from the sun, the fucking chemical makeup of the air. Yeah. Everything is so finely tuned in homeostasis. Like, just at the right point to where we can all even exist. Yeah. And maybe that's like something's going on. You have to have your own homeostasis, but it is undulating, uh, ebbs and flows, ups and downs. Yeah. And what, I, what I'm trying to say is there is room for discomfort within the harmony. If mm-hmm. there is, like going to work at all is uncomfortable. Doing extra while you're at work to make sure that you can maybe get a promotion one day when it's offered is taxing. Uh, yeah. It's taxing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But there's a there's a level within our harmony that we can push ourselves that's fair. And then there's maybe summertime where it's like, let me push myself like as much as I can or as much as I can for a longer duration. There's like that extra, extra season, right? Mm-hmm. But at some point in that and all of that, there's a baseline that is like what you can hold and what you should hold and what's like fair to you. And you're operating within that homeostasis. Yeah. So sometimes it's easier to identify when someone else is being outside of what your homeostasis would be. Because sometimes we have a hard time externalizing our internal struggle. Be like, he's working way too many hours. <laughs> it's like, th- this person feels like maybe they're working too many hours. Maybe could be what's going on. Or whatever it might be, the overtaxation. Mm. Because I think we do have uh, something inside us that tries to bear as much as we can bear. Yeah, right? It's the thing that's like the observer or the identifier. The thing that's watching the movie of your life, I guess. Like, Or when we're talking about like we have a like a mental homeostasis, Like, it's like our baseline of what our life looks like or like what we do day to day or like how we operate in this matrix in 24 hours. Cause so we're, we're just hitting it 24 hours at a time. So whenever we have that 24 hours, whenever we wake up, what's our movie look like? How do we do? How do we operate? But it's, I lost myself in that thought. I'm talking about movie observer. Yeah. You're the observer. I guess. Yeah. What you, what you call your homeostasis is just what you think of is your day to day and it stays about the same. So I guess maybe unless I guess, yeah. What do you, what are you projecting forward in your movie? Like what's, what's happening next? What's going to, what's developing? What's, what's blooming? What, what's to come? You know, mm. maybe if you don't have a, a blooming plant that you're trying to grow or something that you're trying to aim for or move towards, it's just like the same movie over and over again. Right. Or you become stuck in that rut or in that homeostasis. And then if anything is, like put upon you to increase your whatever you deem to be your homeostasis and then like there's an increase in whatever it is physical activity like pressure at work work hours financial obligations whatever it's increased then we got stress then we're like oh no like i'm I'm trying to maintain this current level of homeostasis that i think my life is like so then like to have to increase it or to have to adjust and fucking new limitations new restrictions i have to operate and move within and exist in it's scary and it's hard and it's demanding Unless, like, you fucking prepare your mind for it and, like, look for it. It's like, all right, because that, that's going to happen. That's just going to fucking happen. Whatever you think is happening, homeostasis, day to day, it's going to, the limitations are going to fluctuate, fucking move and change. Shit just happens. So, you're, like, your movie's never really going to be the same. 
regardless. I think we probably want it to be because it's like easy and familiar. I think exploration is part of tr- a truer homeostasis. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. I don't think homeostasis necessarily refers to just like our desire to stay like neutral or like to not have my body temperature go up higher and come back down because that's like also homeostasis. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But like my proper human experience and that that proper human experience going forth. I think that that there there is a homeostasis like thing that is making sure that we're like optimistically comfortable and uncomfortable. I mean, not uh, ideally. Mm-hmm. Um, optimally. Optimally, there's the word. Yeah. Optimally comfortable and uncomfortable. Optimally exploring. Optimally safe. Optimally um, well and like you know like when you eat, you're eating good most of the time, but then you're also taking a little bit of time to like indulge. That's like a more proper, potentially nutritious plan to not like fuck up. Yeah, the, too much restriction, too quick. Yeah, or too much freedom, you know. Yeah, and yeah. I think that there's like also a, a some kind of life experience homeostasis, like our matter itself, as it's like just like physics, as it's going through whatever we call life to be. Just like how summer feels like maybe we're supposed to work harder in the summer. There's like a if something gets too far out of homeostasis for too long, there's that <laughs> red light that flares up. That's like this is wrong. Like, I can't, this is, I can't do this anymore. Mm, and yeah. I don't, it's not always someone quitting because, you know, I just can't, you know, mm. there's that. But like, there's the point where it's just like, this is just too, it's too much suffer for too long. I have to know it's going to end if I'm going to suffer this long. It's, it's ending right much. now. It's, <laughs> it's ending today. It's done. Yeah. And maybe that's part of it too. Is yeah. like, like, that's how I end up people walking out of the restaurant is they're like, whatever too much discord and their harmony to a point where their homeostasis is begging for a time give me some kind of time frame to do this so that i can put it into a box and i can say okay yes i do feel that way but it's coming to an end at this point so i can manage it better now but there's no management of that it's just all over the place Hmm. i think i think that spurs evolution i think that spurs change i think that's what made us start like peeing inside and shit someone was like (laughs) wait what "Eh." I ain't shitting outside no more, dog. No more. I am done. <laughs> Look, I'm putting up a box and a, and then someone made like an indoor toilet. An outhouse. An outhouse. And I think that that's a lot of our ingenuity. Someone just being like, I can't do this anymore. You don't want to shit in the house, so we need to go outside. But you don't want to go outside and be just exposed in the elements into the nature, into the animals. You're a sitting duck, bitch. <laughs> but fucking, if a predator's coming up and you're shitting, caught you with your pants down. Yeah. You're done. You're done. So now we need a, an outhouse. We need some shelter outside so we can shit in peace. Someone got pushed over by a someone was done. or something. Yeah, someone got someone got fucked up by predators or something when they were being... Got their house robbed. Something happened. They're taking a poop. Ingenuity was born. Right. Outhouses, toilets, plumbing. Done. I'm an, Enough is enough. <laughs> yeah, dude. But how do you have the discernment to know that, you know, it's time for systematic change? Mm-hmm. You gotta really be. This is the thing. This is an also a deep thought. Come on. You have to be true, true to your experience, because if you're not true to your experience, how could you ever know where the responsibility lies for your unfortunate experience? Mm. Okay, I want to say that again. So, if, if you're taking true responsibility in your life, that's the only way that you could know that maybe your unfortunate experience isn't an internal problem. Yeah. Okay. Be- because you okay. could you could gaslight yourself into thinking, well, maybe that's my fault, or maybe like I'm just being a bitch, or maybe like uh, I have a, a biased view of the situation. I'm biased. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you could be true and honest and have discernment and, and know because you're true to your experience, like nope, this this is crossing the line. I know it's crossing the line because I've been playing a good hand. I've been playing a fair hand. I've been paying attention. I've being aware. I've been speaking up. I've been communicating. I've been doing everything I can do to my experience to try to make sure that, you know, good things kept happening. We passed through time in a beneficial way. Yeah, yeah. And maybe having the, having that ability to see, to see that would also be, or because maybe you're able to view it through their lens as well, or it's like through the objective. It's like, I know this is too much because I've been watching the movie very closely and I've been watching movies for a very long time. And I know what it looks like when things get out of hand or when things are, the scales are off balance. Like I know what it looks like. And partially you might, you might be able to do that because you're able to put yourself in the position of others. We can empathize with people. Uh-huh. We can, we're literally just, just watching the movie. So it's like, if I, if I were him, I'd be pissed or whatever. You know what I'm saying? If I were him, I wouldn't do that. Or it's like, that's unfair. I think it's unfair to him for this reason. 
right. or whatever. Even though it's not happening to you, you can empathize through like just like the objective reality of the movie that we're all in. Yeah, you know, it's like it's too much. But you have to have some truth in your own discernment and your own view of the world of what's happening objectively to be able to trust your discernment and trust your ob- opinion of what's, I guess, right or what's uh, in harmony. What's the most harmonic action we could take right now to put us in line with the fucking cosmos, right? <laughs> like a spaceship. <laughs> yeah, just beam. Damn it, son. Ultra light beam. Feet on the ground. On the ground, pants, <laughs> shoes. <laughs> But that ultra light beam shit that's 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 I think as a kid, so how do you how do you develop this discernment that we're talking about? How how does one be true to their first of all don't experience? lie. Ah, just literally be true to your experience. That's <laughs> one. Don't lie to yourself. Yes. Your own damn thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, be skeptical. That's that's an easy way to not lie. Is you know what I'm saying? It's just just be like, I don't know, maybe. Well here's you know another what one. What if you uh what if what if like, what if you want to blame something outside of yourself? You know? You're like, mm-hmm. oh, this boss just hates me. He just has it out for me. I can't. I, there's nothing I can do to make this boss like me. It's like, but really, you just suck at the job. Ah. That could happen, too. And it's maybe maybe your I boss should, sure. should still like you if you suck at the job. Sure. Maybe. But at the same time, maybe you're just, like, not a good employee. And, in that particular position. Right. Mm-hmm. So how, how would you know that, that some of that is your fault and not their fault? it's just the ability, I guess the I guess what's the evidence that the other party is using to say that you are not good at your job you know what I'm saying if you could see the same evidence and be like that's bullshit because X, Y, and Z or like maybe that is the standard or like I know other people who do the same thing or worse and don't get called out for it that's bullshit but if it's like you were late this time you fucked up here you dropped this I told you to do this you didn't do it you told me you did this thing and you didn't do it. It's like, am I lying in any of those instances? No. Or or yes. Or whatever. You know what I'm saying? The truth. Yeah. Of yeah. objective reality. Yeah. Are you doing a good job? Yeah. Can you deem that yourself? Yeah. Just by looking if around. If you were me. If you were me. And I was you. Even if what you're, would you do? you're you. Yeah. Can you deem that you're doing a good job? Like yeah. If your boss is just like, dude, you suck. It's like, oh. <laughs> dude. <laughs> What do you want me to say? Cheeks. Would you... Would you. you. Cheeks. <laughs> would you be able to... Would you have any inkling beforehand? I think you would. Yeah. Of course, right? Yes. You know if you fuck up an order or if you do something at work that's incorrect. I'm not sure what other analogies I could use in a fucking... If, you're mis, if you misquote something or if you give misinformation to a guest over customer service or whatever or of a, over a fucking like a phone call center... Whatever, or if you misput information into a fucking quote that you're writing up or somebody, it's like that shit happens. And it's like, look at it, look at it, yeah, look at it, and tell the truth and say, well, what is that? Did you lie? <laughs> you're like, my address is uh, we're over here on three five six uh, Blue Light Wall Drive, <laughs> like, Lane, yeah, the third. That's a lie. Mm-hmm. So if you didn't know, then you'd be like, I don't know. I have to find that information for you, and then you'd be doing your job probably better because just by not lying. So that's like back to rule one for some of that shit is like, would you know if you were good at your job? And then if you're bad at your job, would you know that you were bad at your job? If you're being honest with yourself. If you're being honest with yourself. And the other thing is playing the game. You'd have to actually engage with it. You'd have to say, what's my job? Okay, I'm going to try to do my job. I'm going to try to do my job. I'm going to do my job. And mm-hmm. then when you're actually doing your job, like, well, how do they do it? Okay. Mine doesn't look as good as theirs. Or like, my, I'm doing this really good, but everyone else struggles with this. Am I like cheating? Am I cutting a corner? How come you guys can't do this very fast? Mm-hmm. And then, like, if you were to to actually engage with the life, I think then yes, you would definitely know whether you were good or bad, and then you could curtail what you were bad at and try to be good. Yeah, yeah, because like the job is just like the the restraints that we put on ourselves, or like the the limitations or the the games we play. Yeah, the games that we have to set up, and there's like an objective, and there's a like A to B, or it's like this is what we this is what's going on, and this is what we want it to look like whenever it's done. And it's like, boop, boop, boop. And like A to B and then micro steps in between those steps for everything, for every aspect, for the in- industry. It's, we got side work, we got taking care of guests, we got all kinds of stuff. And then within taking care of guests, like menu knowledge and all that stuff. It's like you could, they're all like little mini games. 
and you have to through all those constraints whatever constraints that you have like you have to be able to identify them and yeah like play with them know know the games that we're doing and be able to say what's the objective what are we doing here how what looks what does it look like if it's done well what's perfection look like you know what i'm saying what's someone doing a good job look like i want to, and then we'll be like if we all mutually agree that's what a good job looks like it's okay now i'm gonna try to get to that so then if you're able to like identify it see it and then try to get to it or if you're not doing any of that then it's like that's kind of a bad job that's like part of part of doing the job one is like identifying what a good job is so if you don't even know what it looks like it's like you're already doing a bad job you know what i'm saying even though you could maybe use that as an excuse of like i'm not i'm not doing a bad job no one no one trained me no one taught me mm, mm. Some, some responsibility to take there you figure it out <laughs> yeah you make it happen papa like everything in life you kind of have some responsibility to figure it out on yeah. your own i mean I also have responsibility to lean on other people's understanding of what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. You gotta try to do it on your own to some degree. Wrap mm -hmm. your head around it. Yeah. Yeah. That's basic. That's not asking a lot. That's not asking a lot. That's basic ass human shit, bro. Yeah. What are we doing here? That's that's all I need you to ask with intent and like purpose. And to like try What's to, going on here? to do it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? With like a relative reasonable amount of doing something. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be good at it, but if you know you're not, if you know there's people doing better than you and you're like, well, that's not necessarily worth putting in all the extra effort that they put in to be so great at it. I'm going to do it at this level. You would know that at least, you know? Being honest with yourself. Yeah. So you, yeah. So I think to bring it back, I think we were, we were talking about if they would know, I think they would know. I think we all know. If we were to sit down and really think about it and look at it, I think we would know if you're not maintaining the standard doing a good job so like maybe your boss or maybe yeah and so then in your own mental construction you just think that your boss is out to get you or whatever or you're just being you're, like you're victimizing yourself or allowing yourself to be uh like free of responsibility or you know what i'm saying it's like that's not on me it's not on me it's on them that's the this is the reason that this is happening it's out there it's like i don't know fuck that <laughs> Fuck that. As much as you can. Fuck that. As much as you can. Yeah, because sometimes maybe your boss is out to get you or whatever. How would you know? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, you would that know if question. you were true to yourself in the obligations of what the responsibilities are. What's a good job look like? We all mutually, we all agree that's what a good job looks like. Okay, I'm going to emulate that. And then if you look back at the film, it's like, no, I emulated that pretty much to the best of my ability for as long as I possibly could. I had maybe a minor hiccups here. Like I missed this like small minor thing. I missed this drink or whatever, but like for the most part, I'm pretty much on there and you, you would be able to, to determine that through your own like true, true understanding. And then if your boss is like just trying to maybe, yeah, maybe he's trying to fire me or maybe he just like, just doesn't like me. Wants me out of this bitch. I've been, I've been to that. I've been down that road. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, maybe I'm not that good at the job. And then one of the other GMs is like, you're the best server we have. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm good at the job. Okay, that's what I thought. Nice. I'm not tripping. Because it's hard to do your responsibilities and watch how everyone else is doing their responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Probably rather just stick to my own books. Yeah. So it's hard to be like, my books are way off. Like, they're the most accurate. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Okay. But then you could know. Right. That's Dude, what it takes. That's what it takes. The objective. Yeah, it's all the objective. Literally, like, what are we trying to do? And, like, the objective reality. You got to keep a real sane fucking mental during this whole life process to not get lost in the sauce. <laughs> Start doing way less than you should or way more than you should. I get lost in the sauce all the time. I'm lost right now. <laughs> I'm sauced up as we speak. Yeah, bro, I get it. It's, yeah, it's, I guess we were talking about, like, the marathon and, like, the pace. I think that's another thing that's been hitting. Or, like, a truth I know that seems to be just, like, an accurate thing. It's, like, because you, you were talking about it. Like, we have our, or, like, the homeostasis and the... Like how much should we be doing and like our, our output and it's like our pace, you know what I'm saying? How fast are we running year to year? You know what I'm saying? How much are we doing like really year to year, month to month, week to week? And then like we know what that feels like and then we're trying to increase that slowly over time. Like do our best. So ideally try to, to do more good than, than you were last year, you know, or whatever. Less bad, whatever. However you want to, however you want to measure it. But I don't, I don't know. It's our pace. Yeah. It's our pace. Our weekly pace. What do you want to get done in a week? Because mm. all we have is 24 hours. Well, fuck us. Everybody's working with that same I'm, 24. I'm, that one's holding on. That one's... That's something that's been like in my... Ingrained into my fucking conscious now. 
It's like we only have 24 hours. Like even Elon Musk has the same amount of time that I have to deal with. Yeah. He's getting a lot of shit done. Oh, He's yeah. got crazy amounts of shit going on. So like it's possible. It's possible. It's fucking possible. Whatever you think you're like, whatever you're trying to accomplish or trying to do, like you can do it. You can fucking organize your 24 optimally enough to get you where you need to be. And it's not going to be tomorrow. You need to be able to, <clears throat> maybe that's another thing where it kind of ties into another thought we were talking about originally, but you need to, because I've, I've heard this mentioned through like sports analogies or whatever on Instagram, but the idea that you need to be able to like sprint, not knowing how long it's going to take or, you know what I'm saying? Like when the finish line is. Yeah. But like, I guess you need to be able to apply that to something that's like important. Like what would you be able to apply that much passion towards? There is something that you would be able to apply that much passion towards and you would be happy to do it. Awesome. Like, you, like a race that's designed for you. There's something out there for you, but it's fucking, it's hard. It's hard, it's hard to, to maintain that pace forever. Isn't the burnout's real. But damn, I'll, I'll be able to like, because we all have the same 24. We all have the same 24 hours. So I guess you have to optimize your 24 to not burn yourself out in the grand scheme of your life, you know? But you got to be able to fucking put some work in, bro. Because we all have Elon Musk, every, Bill Gates, everyone, he, fucking Tesla, Einstein. We all had the same building blocks. We all had the same blocks. And out of that comes the craziest like fucking michael jackson or whatever like the fucking michelangelo da vinci we all have the same building blocks that we're dealing with so you can fucking do whatever you're trying to do if you just, like cut the bullshit and see what's like try to align up with what's the most true thing that you would possibly if you could devote your whole life to something what would it be like we we're talking about earlier as well it's like because i know that we're going to be whenever we're hitting the mj38 productions like it's not going to it's going to be a lot of work. It's a lot of work now. Like, you know, like while we're still working this job, like I'm still fucking chugging away, chugging away, but it doesn't feel like work or, you know, it doesn't feel like, like what we did before we got on the pod. It's like that. It's like, but it, it is, but it isn't, you know what I'm saying? Like it definitely is. Like we were troubleshooting for like an hour and a half, no cap easily, like for sure. Trying to figure this shit out, setting up for like at least two hours plus just setting everything up, getting everything lined up, plugging everything in, unboxing a couple new things, trying to figure out the the routing of the audio and the video and everything. Like all that's just like fucking nothing to somebody else, but to me like I love that. Like I'm I'm fucking here for it. Like you know what I'm saying? Beautiful. Right? It's awesome. Yeah. That's the difference. Yeah. Between I guess like what you're saying, it, it, how much of, is the work burning you out or is the thing worth sprinting for? Yeah. Yeah, the toll is different on your body. Yeah, is it worth putting your 24 on? I'm, I'm, I'm fucking down. Put the whole 24 on this. Okay. All right. All right. And then it'll manifest. At least that's how it looks so far. Yeah, there's a part of life that's like working with you. Like reaching to you, coming from you. Like, it's like, how would I ever find the thing that would make my existence worth existing for? It's like, uh, it's like calling to you all the time. It's out there. <clears throat> it's just waiting for you. Yeah. I think, I think. It's peeking through the blinds. It's right. There's a peaky blinder. Yeah. Sure. Man, be, tr- be genuine to your experience. Be true to your experience. Your yes. true self, your true, unbiased. I also think we, ha- you know, you have like regulatory thoughts. Like, you're like oh, someone cut me off in traffic. Like, oh, you bitch. And then you're like, you silly motherfucker. Sometimes I'm like, you silly son of a I know I don't feel that way about that person. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Fucking dumbass, man. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> like, I know that that's like uh, not just being, there's times where I'm like. Truly genuine. Yeah, like a, like offended for something I shouldn't be offended for. And I'm like, that's not even really how I feel. But I still fired those thoughts. I still felt that way about it when it happened. It's like that regulatory process can help you in your life thing. It's like, yeah, I know I was I was interested in doing that thing, but then like I was doing it and I just like wasn't that interested to be honest. And like uh to to know that but in the moment you might be like giving it your all and like really trying to be like invested in it. It's all you had going on. It's the only thing you there was to do. That's where your social life was, that's where your sense of purpose was. Mm-hmm. But in reality, just like there's other things that interest me way more than that thing that I was doing with all of my time and all of my focus. Yeah. And like, you got to be true to yourself in that sense, you know? I think like that genuine, like, there's like a, you know, like you could watch Yes Men by Jim Carrey and just be like, that thing, that thing is speaking to me. 
that fucking say yes to, to something I wouldn't say yes to might result in a different outlook on something that I did I wouldn't have seen coming. So like with that, I could watch the same movie and not feel that thing. She's like, oh, he's so funny. I go about my life. Mm-hmm. But then you're watching that movie and you feel that thing and it interacts with you. And that idea starts to envelop you and, and you feel inspired by it. And so to be true and genuine to your experience, you would have to follow that inspiration. And then you'd also have to have a moment where like, maybe it's just like, oh yeah, well, I was going to play Frisbee, but I don't really fucking play Frisbee with that guy. But like this guy was talking about doing this thing and it was weird because I could definitely go play Frisbee easily. It's like, yeah, just go play Frisbee. But this guy was kind of like saying he does this thing over here and he didn't even tell me how to do it. He just kind of mentioned it, but it spoke that, it flickered that light of that yeah. feeling of that Jim Carrey feeling I had on that couch when I watched that movie. That inspirational feeling. Right. It like stroked the flame in it. So like that, to be true and genuine to your experience, I think you got to like... Explore that. Explore that shit. Do it's calling that shit. to you. That's what I'm saying when it's calling yeah. to you. Yeah. The white rabbit. It's peeking through the blinds at you all the time. Mm-hmm. And even if it's not like that guy introduces you to this thing over here and that's the thing you wanted to do. It's difficult to know exactly which road is the highway. Sometimes you're taking roads to get to the highway. Yeah, big time. But you got to still go where the GPS is calling you to go to get to your destination. Mm-hmm. Right? And yeah. you've got that GPS. It's right here. It's a, it's a feeling process. It's yeah. a... You feel your heart flutter ever? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm tripping. Like, yeah. <laughs> I definitely... I think that thing mm-hmm. is like the... It can be. Not every heart flutter. Sometimes something falls and you're like... <laughs> I should open a pizza shop. Maybe. <laughs> a pizza fell. Yeah. But uh but there's different moments where it's like it hits and it incites that feeling of wonder or that excitement or that inspiration. <clears throat> yeah, or it feels like coincidence or it feels like something we call it coincidence, but whatever we're identifying that feeling as, like whatever that thing is, and maybe it's like from the same inspirational point or like whatever, you know what I'm saying? Or like the inspiration might be from derived from the same type of energy of oh wow that's, that's kind of weird or like it flickers something of like anomaly like anomaly in your homeostasis of what you think's happening day to day it's like oh shit like that's that's something that happened outside of my thing but like i think it's it like perked me up yeah. because of it you know it was like different enough to be like whoa what was that it could have be some something someone said while you're thinking something or something you saw while someone was saying something or someone just like a, a, a recurring word or a recurring movie or a recurring theme that's happening like or like an animal, like fucking. I remember seeing lizards all the time, or seeing like thirty eights all the time, or like uh, Goodwill Hunting it was like like the timing of watching that movie like was coinciding with my life crazy. Someone was like just quoting, "I like them apples," and like I don't. It was just some crazy shit, crazy shit, you know. But the ins- the feeling of inspiration of wonderstruck and awe. Yeah, that like anomaly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the, yeah, wonder. Like this is different. This is a, dif- a different, a different interaction than the, the mundane. And Inter- everyday interactions that I do, like, every day, you know what I'm saying? It's a clue from your subconscious yes. pointing to the divine. Yeah. In my opinion. <laughs> Trying to enlighten you. Yeah. That way, that way, that way, that way, that way. Yeah. Think like this. Be like, like be on this frequency. Come to this frequency. Mm. Now we're talking, th- this is the science of that harmony. You know what I'm saying? There's, okay, yeah. There's something to that. First of all, whatever harmony you find yourself in, whatever your homeostasis is, you'll attract a ton of, a ton of that homeostasis to you. And it won't always necessarily like necessarily look like a thousand yous in a room, but like this person living that lifestyle, they're like their frequency they're on, like the thing that generates like the, all the thoughts that they have and their lifestyle, it's culminating into this smell or this this frequency is what we say. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yeah, this, yeah. this, this color, wavelength, yeah. wavelength, whatever. And you're on that same thing too. And even though it looks different, you might be like, you know, like I think I don't really think age matters. I don't really think gender matters. Yeah. Uh, occupation sometimes. Sometimes it's <clears throat> your job. Sometimes all the people that came to your job, for whatever reason, y'all are on the same frequency. And then there's like times in that job where even though you're all there for relatively the same reason, it's like you're not all thinking the same exact while you're in that spot. And then you'll find people that you connect with that are on that same frequency in that same spot, in that same. And it gets like weird. Yeah. But I think that shit's like gravity almost though. Mm-hmm. Because, like, you just find yourself... Who knows why we're around the people we're around? But I think that there's something, like, a magnet pulling us all. Yeah, what happened? How do we... How do you become a friend with somebody? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like, like, do you just... We just decide? Or, like, it's just a fucking... Like, you know, like, you click with someone. Like, you're on, like, a wavelength. They're, they're a similar frequency. A similar 
thought pattern or a belief structure. Even if you don't talk about it, like you might be able to to click with someone just like over, like sometimes like when you're taking care of a table, you can just like tell like oh like me and this guy are clicking immediately. Yeah. Like when they're like we're, we're chilling, this guy's cool. Like yeah, whatever. Yeah. Whatever it may be, or like even yeah, in, in school or in life, whenever you're finding your way socially, like making friends, talking to kids, talking to people, like you know, you you feel it. You feel like the the match, the vibes. Yeah, it's fucking vibes. Vibe, dude. It's He's a fucking, fucking vibe. Chill, bro. <laughs> <laughs> smoke a doobie with that guy. He's fucking <laughs> chill. We can eat a sandwich. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, so I think there's something. There's definitely something there. I think you 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 were hitting it with a. There's something that called to you. Or meant, that's like I don't know why, but like this, like the being a nurse is what came to my mind. It's like there's a lot of people who are nurses, and like they're all probably called there for a very similar thing, or like whatever's like whatever drives you to want to become a nurse. It's like they're they're all being pulled by that same force, and they're all interacting with it with that that caring caregiver force, whatever it is, the spirit of taking care of somebody, like physically. Like, I guess because people do the same thing with, like, food or whatever, whatever their outlet is. But, like, nurses, they all have their – they're being drawn by something. And, like, or, like, chefs, you know what I'm saying? It's the same kind of thing, like, to bridge these two thoughts together. It's, like, to take care of someone physically, like, ailments and fucking – there's scratches and boo-boos and broken bones. It's, like, and they take care of somebody, like, the hospitality. You take – like, you make you, – you, you shelter them. You feed them. You take care of them. Like that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, like, two different spirits, but, like, the, the same spirit, but two different – aspects of the same spirit that call to people differently it's like well why wouldn't these chef people be called to be nurses and why wouldn't these nurse people be called to be chefs it's like there's something individually uniquely pulling you specifically and like it pulls you into this domain of other people who are pulled by the same thing and then within that there's even hierarchies of like you'll, you'll probably vibe with a lot of those people you literally share the same occupation so you have things in common for sure but even within that there's like structures and hierarchies of how you organize your thoughts and your being and your actions and behavior that make you vibe with people who don't vibe with people. Like, they're, like that guy's cool. Like, just generals, like, everyone's pretty cool. And then, like, everyone being kind of cool whenever they're unknown. And then you see their interactions with you and with each other. And then, like, it starts to be like, oh, that guy's kind of not cool with a lot of people, but I don't really give a fuck. Or it's like, I don't like that guy, but everyone likes that guy. Or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It all just kind of plays out based on our frequencies and our fucking, our vibe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? <laughs> fucking, Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of strange. He's like, I'm, I'm glad that you and I are fucking homies from forever. It's like, it was just like vibes. Vibes, bro. <laughs> Mortal Kombat, bro. Bro, N64, dude. That sounds fun. Kingdom fine. Hearts, bro. <laughs> it's like, it's crazy too, because I think about my fiance and her best friend. It's crazy because she didn't, they're like as close as we're close, you know? Like the same thing. Like my brother, her sister, like they're fucking, like we're not actual brothers and sisters, but it feels like that. Yeah. And it's how like we treat each other or like the energy we give towards each other and the idea of how we hold our relationship and our mental. It's like, that's like the, where we're at with it. And like, she, but she didn't meet her until she was in her mid to late twenties. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we met each other when we were eight and seven or like in that ballpark. And she, they, they met in their mid, mid twenties, but it was still just like vibes. It's funny too, because <laughs> You two have a similar outlook on your best friendship, which makes sense because you two vibe. We vibe. Yeah, then then y'all can relate about the way you vibe with other people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because the frequencies are so in harmony. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. See, this is this is this is the driving force of connectivity for people. It's weird. So right. talking like Jordan Peterson whenever I get on. Connectivity. <laughs> I, I really turn in Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, fucking moose, man, me snig, dude. That's it, bro. Yeah, man. We got a little abstract, dude. I story. just I like, like it's it, the vibe. It doesn't matter because we talk about anything. We're just gonna pew. As soon as we talk about anything, yeah, anything. It's like talking about Game of Thrones. I'm pew. I'm already gone. I'm gone quick. I could talk about the fucking actual actors and shit. Because what's, yeah, what's really but, going on is the fucking frequency shit. Yeah. So I'm like, you said this, and I'm taking it straight to what's really going on. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, there we go. But yeah, that's what we're trying to do here. Yeah, man. Have you been watching anything? Because I know we've, we've been watching GOT, and we're, we're just locked in. We're fucking five seasons. We're like in the in the fifth season already. It's fucking awesome. Is there anything else that's been floating around in the matrix of the people, like Netflix or anything you've been watching? No, we talked about Mr. and Mrs. Smith, which is amazing. Still highly recommend that for everybody. Yeah, I still need to check that out. Um, we're just clean, bad and clean up on movies, so we're watching... I'm not really a movie guy. I don't know why. I like watching the you best like movies. Movie. or shows better? Oh, uh, man. Yeah, show. I'm a show guy. Show. I like shows. It, you're asking me, do I like... Uh... Well, I guess it's like one long movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do I want a relationship or a one-night stand? 
Yeah, true. I like a relationship. It's got to be a great relationship, though. I got to be committed. You know what I'm saying? It got to be worth committing for. Yeah. I need to That's be truly invested. Yeah. If I don't have a good show to watch or I don't know of any to, to check out, then I'm probably much more willing to watch a movie right. that I know is good. Right. Because I've heard is good, at least. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah. in yeah. lieu of a great TV show, yeah. Ben, I, I love the number one movie on Netflix. Like, it's always good. Nine times out of ten, it's like uh, whatever the number one movie on Netflix is on their top ten. It's usually perfect for just like a one night, throw something on. Um, like Good story. Yeah. I recommend Entertaining. a movie called, uh, I think it was called The Killer or A Killer. Okay. I recommended it to you. Oh, he's the one with the New Orleans guy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was just number one on Netflix one day. I was just like, oh, let's watch this. Mm, it's like okay. how I find a lot of shit. Heard. So like Jack Reacher, there was a, a new Jack Reacher movie, Tom Cruise, that came out. Jack Reacher, Tommy. On Netflix. Never seen it. Jack Reacher, yeah. So that's a movie series that got a TV series on Amazon Prime with different actors and a different writing team. Damn. Yeah, it's a popular CIA. Wow, wow, wow. He's always getting arrested for some shit that he didn't do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we watched that. Um, what else? Demolition Man. Threw it back to the 80s. Sylvester Stallone movie. Okay, yeah. yeah. That about movie that, was about yeah. like a dystopian... Here's what that movie was about. And like the... It had to come out in the eighties. We chat GPT it. It's like United States twenty thirty. Things have gone to shit. There's fires all over Los Angeles. There's like looting. It's like already been looted for many years. There's like starvation. It's like cr- crime is so crazy that the cops are like, you know, wearing like bulletproof vests everywhere and shit. It's wild. So in that time, the way that they do jail is they t- instead of putting you in jail, they freeze you. For your sentence. Like, okay. Cryogenically. Got it. Ice you up. You're frozen. So our protagonist goes after the biggest, baddest guy. They get into a fight. And in that fight, the biggest, baddest guy makes it seem like the protagonist let a bus full of people be exploded in a bomb in pursuit of the biggest, baddest guy. So by kind of proving that, it's, it's almost like a, it's a little weird in the plot, but the cop ends up getting put to prison as well. And that's Sylvester Stallone. But so does the bad guy. So hmm. they get frozen for like 60, 70 years, I think is the time frame. When they thought, well, they come back in the future because the bad guy gets let out by bad people to do bad things. And then they say, do anything you can to stop this guy. And then there's like a, a 2000s buff that's like a cop. And it's Sandra Bullock, young Sandra Bullock. She loves everything in 2000s. It's like basically 90s culture. Because that was like culture then. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so you're saying. So yeah, she's yeah. like keeping it alive even though they're all living in future times. They yeah. got like self-driving cars. They got like... Uh, it's supposed to be like in like 2040s or 2060s or something like that? At this point, yeah. It's like 2080, 2090 or something like okay. that. So they have like AI and shit. They're mm-hmm. all like, AI, find me all the reasons, blah, 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 blah. And then the AI is like, your suspect is probably doing this. And it's, they're going down this route right here. And they're all like, see, AI is the greatest, which is kind of trippy to me now. That's like, crazy. Right? Mm-hmm. Super crazy. The um, the car is all like, you. it could drive itself and it could, the steering wheel will pop out and let you drive it. Like a iRobot? Yeah. Like a fucking Tesla, bro. Mm. It's crazy. And then the other thing is that their society, they have crime all the way down to like zero. There's like no crime anymore. So when this big bad guy comes back, he starts, he, first place is he, he goes for a gun. And the only place there's a gun is at the museum because like war is like done. Guns are ancient. Yeah. But he gets all the guns he could need, and then he starts, like, wreaking havoc. And the police are like, they don't even know how to, they don't even have guns. They don't know how to handle it. Not at all. They're not prepared for the malevolence that's just there. None. Like, they're all like, oh, my God. <laughs> malevolence? They, they see what the fuck a, you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> they see a murder happen, and they're like, what does 187 mean? Mm-hmm. 187? They have to go through, like, a database, and they're like, murder, kill? What the fuck? Well, yeah, the first murder in, like... I don't know how long. It's right. happened that at least 60, 70 years. Right. Um, so I just thought that was a crazy take because it was like a lot of stuff that they predicted was true. And then they're also kind of like, you know, there's a big take on America right now that we're over feminizing our culture. The youths. I guess we're not over feminizing it. What we're doing is we're taking what is traditionally known masculine to energy. Be masculine energy and then deeming a lot of it. that to be toxic. Yeah. And then. That's creating this rift where should a proper use of masculine energy arise, we might not know how to... Even know how to do it. Right. 
And that's like one of the that's takes scary. on America right now. Yeah. And then it was their problem. Like they had to get Sylvester Stallone to come back and he's like whooping ass. And he's Rambo. It was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> this humanity. Yeah. Jesus. That's cool. Is this high 80s movie? Yeah. Let's go. Sylvester. Was that before Rocky or after Rocky? I don't know. When was Demolition Man made? He's a little bit older for sure. Demolition Man. 1993. I'm sorry. Okay. I think anything Sylvester Stallone did uh, is in the 80s. It's a good year. Damn good year. It's a fine year. The 80s? No, 93. 93? Hell yeah. Great year. That don't make them like they used to back in 93. Good year. Golly, good year. Jesus. (laughs) So, yeah. That's a sub. Yeah. Movies. I don't know why I don't like movies that much. I guess I prefer the show for sure. The movie... Yeah, it's just like a one night stand. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, I need more than that. I need more than that. I guess a movie is a really good movie if you can watch it multiple times. But a show is a good show if you can watch it multiple times. For sure. Yeah. Dude, you, you finish a good What's show, the start it right back over. From the top. Start right back over. What was the. I'm trying to think of the last movie we watched. I don't even fucking know, man. Sometimes movies just come up randomly as hell. Because, yeah, we're definitely more show people. We definitely watched King Richard. I guess that's the one with the, the Williams twins, the tennis tennis twins. That was a great movie. Amazing, fantastic movie. On the edge of crying the entire movie. It's just great, just great, just fucking pushing it, bro. Just fucking going, bro. Just doing it, just doing it to the max. Yeah, that movie. That movie will hit you in the spirit. I love the spirit of that movie. And I don't even know what else we've been watching aside from that. But yeah, I'm not I'm not a movie person. It's crazy. A couple of movies I like. I don't they even don't like, make them like they used to. Go Goodwill right. Hunting, bro. You sit down for that movie. Damn, <laughs> damn. Like that should shake you up. That's a great movie. The pro- one problem with movies is like when I watched John Wick one, it was like what well, part of what made it was so great is I knew there was a John Wick two. Like I knew it wasn't over yet. Mm. That's the problem with things ending. <laughs> they have to end, but the- sometimes it's, it hurts when they, they do. Got to end. It's a hard thing to end a story. Oh. To end the story well. God, I really want fucking George to finish them books, boy. He's living in a fucking paradox right now. They're both written and not written at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> it must end. It will end. It's never going to end. It hasn't ended. Right. It maybe, already did end. Maybe it's over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe it's over. Fuck, that's a scary thought. I hope not. Oh, I hope not. Yeah, ending, ending a series. People didn't like the way GOT ended Game of Thrones. That's okay. How do you fuck that up? Mm, if I had to put it into words, I guess maybe the way that they ended it, it just misaligned grossly with the way that people thought they should have gone with a couple couple characters in particular. It's like their tendencies, it's like I don't think they would have done that. I don't, I don't think they would have acted in that way, you know, that kind of shit. Yeah. So it's like, uh, I don't know if they if they took creative liberties a little too At far. Point, we took the we took the reins from them. Mm-hmm. A good story takes me where they're going, yeah. and I say, "Wow, this is what you did to me." Yeah. At some point, we took the reins from Game of Thrones and said, "This is what you did with that." Like, mm-hmm. what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I guess that was probably a lot of pressure on George to finish that shit and make it dope, make it fucking dope. Because that's that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> that's the pressure I'm putting on him subconsciously. You want it to be perfect, right? Make it dope. Make it fucking dope. That's it. The way it ended, I, I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. I, I accepted it. I was like, okay, that's fine. There's but a lot if, of public flashback. Yeah, if George finishes the same way, I'll be a little upset. Not really, though. I don't give a fuck. I just hope it's dope. Yeah. If not, that's fine too. Yeah. <laughs> Do your own thing, George. I'm not your. I'm not your maker. You know what show I loved? What's that? The Office. Bro, I was just thinking about that the other day. I fucking loved that show. I was like, <laughs> I was like what's it on? Peacock. I need to get that shit and just watch it, watch it, run it back. I haven't seen it in a long time. It's such a good show. It's so fucking funny. So funny, bro. It's just great. It's one of, one of the best shows There's a line of all time. Where Andy says, Which me am I going to be today? I've got a closet full of me's. <laughs> He's like writing this song. Do you have a closet full of you's? <laughs> Try not to. I think you. I think they're kind of. <laughs> I think that just happens. 
there are relationships that you need. We talked about this last time. There are roles and hats that you need to wear that you have to have sure. respect for, respect to. The way you tr- talk to your child is not going to be the same way you talk to your grandpa or yes. whatever. Similar. But ultimately, <laughs> <laughs> ultimately, you should just be you, as true and genuine as you can fucking be. You know what I'm saying? That's our answer. That's it. That's the name of the game. Sometimes I, sometimes I, you know, I might, I might be having a, a personality split over here. Sometimes okay. I wake up and I'm like, you know, stressed. There's a stress version of me that's kind of like, ugh, gotta do this shit. And there's the me that has those same things that's like, all right, let's go. I'm going to fucking kill this shit. I'm going to fucking kill this shit. I'm a cold-blooded killer. I'm not talking to anybody today. Silence mode. Silence is golden. I'm rich. Do not disturb. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> just not a lot of talking. Just a whole lot of action. Mm-hmm. Then there's also the me that's like, if, maybe if I know that I'm going to go celebrate or something like that, I'm like, bah, 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 hey, got to testify. A little more loose. When I touch the sky. Yeah. I, I just feel like... <laughs> <laughs> Just a whole lot of ah. <laughs> a little bit of ah. It was something my dog. Ah. Everywhere I'm at, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna wear the shades on that day. I'm wearing like the ah. that 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 shirt, you know what I'm saying? I'm wearing that shirt, like the one that's a little mm. out there, you know what I'm saying? With those shoes on it. Then there's other days where I'm like, okay, I have to be like super patient today. Yeah, I love for everybody in the world today. I'm just patient, cool, kind. I'm not gonna be overreactive, I'm not gonna be tripping on anything, I'm just be cool. There's other days where it's like I want blood. I want blood today. It's going down. I want his head. And that feels like maybe a closet full of me's. You know? Yeah. Well, I think that's just, I can think, because I had the or the thought that kind of occurred to me is like, I think there are, those are all you, but it's just you with different stressors. Or not stressors, but, you know, Constraint. external constraints. Yeah. Yeah. Different constraints that are forcing you to be this way to, man, I get over, but to, to go, to go on, to get, to, Conquer to, to play and to keep win with that day. To keep on going, yeah. Yeah, you have to give respect and respond to you know the world. Yeah, and feel the emotional spectrum that we have here. Oof. It's like it's nice to. Some guys are like, I don't want to cry. I ain't no bitch. Never cry. It's like I like I love crying. <laughs> <laughs> crying gets me off. Get off on crying. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> I need to. But it's like, I want to ask these questions with a straight face, but it's so hard sometimes when I'm doing the bit. Got to. Because it's a half bit. Because I want the answer, but I also think it's hilarious. Okay. No, sorry. Go on. Oh, no, then. What were we going to say? Oh, we're going to ask something. <laughs> no, just, I lost my, I lost my composure. I think it'd be funnier if I was straight face for some of these. But no, I think. Worked out my poker face. Yeah, we're just, we're just going to, whatever the, the pressures that life puts on us, the story, however the story plays out, you get upset, you get hurt, you get, jealous you get excited you get anxious or like nervous or fucking filled with joy hit a game-winning bucket it's like all of those are just happening to you sometimes you know yeah you can do your best to like resist i guess and maybe you should sometimes to be more in harmony with like the champion version who's gonna like gonna conquer but it's it's just like that being a human we're gonna get pulled into all those emotional directions through something Something or another. It's okay to feel that way or to be, I guess, like to identify that thought as it crosses, but don't like hold on to any emotion too, too, too crazy long. Yeah. It's all balance. I want to be ah, Maddie all the time. Mm-hmm. Miami Maddie all the time. Let them out the cage. Yeah, he's in there. He's in there. He's always in there. He's coming out soon. You got to get the recipe. <laughs> yeah, right. You got to line up. Yeah, right. Line it up. Yeah. Yeah, I guess ideally we're just trying to be. Some people just want to be happy. We're all we all have different goals here. What, what is happy? We're trying, to, we're trying to, yeah, right. Like what's happy or what's a good life or what's. We all have our own interpretation of what would justify our own suffering. What would make our own life worth it? Oh. We're all thinking about that. We all have it. It's in there. It's in there. It gave me butterflies. Just the words coming out of your mouth. <laughs> it's in there. Butterflies. Maybe that's the thing that that white rabbit that we were talking about earlier that appears it's or kind of stokes that flame within yourself in the in the mundane passing of second by second by second by second. It's like oh that second was a little different than every every other second preceding and following. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Maybe that's the spirit of your justification. 
your fucking the thing you would die for. Your conviction. Yeah, your, your passion. Your being. That's mm -hmm. the note in which your frequency is played at. Yeah. Gee. <laughs> I think that's that's what you are. It's what constitutes your your isness, you know? Mm -hmm. It's these hard things to say. Isness isn't a word, but the isness. Your essence. It's a business. What makes hydrogen hydrogen? What makes carbon carbon? What yeah. makes you you? <laughs> the fucking properties of your the properties. How many protons do you have? <laughs> Dude, right? What the fuck? Your electrons and shit. Who knows? Who knows what makes us us? I don't I don't I don't have a suit in my closet that's a different amount of protons or electrons than the other suit. They're all the same thing. Yeah, and I think ultimately I think... it's all me. Ultimately, every time I every time I ask myself every time i ask myself do i have a closet full of me's i get to the same answer at the end of that question and that's who i am you know what i'm saying and the answer is like what's the answer who am i gonna be today cold-blooded winner yeah and the, the the me that knows that the defaults there that gets there mm -hmm. that settles into I'm that be a child of god and feels good about it mm -hmm. and my frequency goes up and i'm like man i got this you know yeah like that's the me mm-hmm Mm -hmm. It hit mm -hmm. me when I was asking myself earlier today. I was just like, there is a bunch of different me's. Which me's? Just like me that handles the fucking business, boy. Yeah. You know I get We're like the, there was there was a thing that arose out that was like, you're talking about all of all of my different emotions, but it's me. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I was getting at. Yeah. And then who are you at your core? That's like, you need to find that, create that, identify it, and fucking be it. Honestly, to the best of your ability. Because if not, then everything else will be just, I don't even know. But yeah, bro. Fucking child of God, first and foremost. And then a fucking winner. Someone's going to figure it out. Child even if I lose, I'm going to figure it out. Yeah. You know? I'm That's with it. that. That's it. And then everything else will just kind of fall, follow. Yeah. Being yeah. a child of God is being a winner. That's the one. That's the win. That's the dub. We got the dub, baby. Yeah, you dubbed up. We dubbed up already. You good. We already got the dub. But the work, there's still job not finished. Job's not finished. <laughs> we're still we're in the game. There's time on the clock. Go out there and fucking make some hay. Do some damage. Do some good. Some good damage. Holy points. Paladins. Holy knights. It's a holy war. <laughs> right? Demonic forces it's of holy principalities. Oh, we should just sign off on that. Oh. <gasps> Did Kobe Bryant do too much, too much? Maybe. Maybe, right? Maybe. Maybe. As much as it pains me to say, maybe. He might have cracked the the human resistance to too much. He might have broken that. David Gawkins seems like he's broken it. If I can... Who else? I, there, Kevin Hart is someone who was doing that. And then he was doing too much, maybe. And then he got in a bad car accident. Yes. And then Gordon is another person. Gordon Ramsay, another example I could think of off top. That was doing too much or maybe constituted by some others. Doing the, the craziest amounts of shows in the fucking world. And then he got in a bad motor, motorcycle accident. Maybe it's a result of doing too much. I don't know. But maybe it's, maybe that's, that's just like the fucking, what we can deem to be too much is just their pace now. Because they've been trying to increase their pace by 1% every year for the last 30 years. This is the argument an ambitious psychopath would make. Right, <laughs> <laughs> come on, but yeah, it, it's a, and it, man. How do you know? How do you fucking know that they're not right? Yeah, I'd rather it's like David Goggins, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather fucking find out I was doing too much than find out I was not doing enough. Mm -hmm. And what happens when you do? That's a crazy. That that's just, what I, the the thing that I've been kind of trying to point at is like that's a difficult fucking thing to like wrap your own head around to see the full. Like, I'm going to live on these axioms because I got it. All, all I can do is be me. But then to d discern, like, the tr a truer truth out here, it's so difficult. Like, you got to. Mm -hmm. You got to really know and be in tune. You got to be in tune enough to know that when you're in tune, you're right. And to have that feeling, like, that that conviction, that, like, conviction is like, I should do this. But this feeling of, like, no, I know this. I know. This, I know. This is truth. Yeah. Yeah. That thing, that's like a fucking, like almost like a stat you have to develop. And it's super, the grind for that is different. Like, it's the don't tell a lie. That's a grind for that. It's mm -hmm. the be responsible. That's a grind for that. Um, show up on time. That's that's a grind for that. Just to help you develop, like, am, am I, is my judgment good? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. 
fucking yeah. gorge. I wonder if David to, to, for Kobe Bryant to sit down with himself and say, "Okay, I'm not doing. I don't. I don't even want to say I'm doing too much. I can't even let those thoughts enter my inner <laughs> matrix." But perhaps this might be unsustainable. Am I someone who sustains unsustainable things? I think this is the kind of shit that this motherfucker right here. <laughs> The thinker. The thinker thinks about. Yeah. Yeah, that was gorgeous. So I don't know. I don't know. If you were to ask him, what do you think he would say? Kobe Bryant? Yeah. Did you do too much? I used to hang out with him. Were there, was there a moment? Or... The spirit of Kobe Bryant came to me. Yes. The Mamba. In a, in a midnight, one in the morning drive to the gym. And it was sitting in the car with me. And I felt him. I felt Kobe Bryant. Like, I mean, dude, like, I'm almost getting watery eyed. And I don't know how to tell you I knew any more than I'm telling you right now. This <laughs> weird thing that lets you just know things sometimes. Mm-hmm. That like the spirit of Kobe Bryant was with me in that moment and was like fully in a, in tracksuit, sweatpants, sweatshirt, zipped up to his chin. And was just like, oh, I'm rolling with you, bro. You are. <laughs> This is what I rock with. This is what I'm. I'm, I'm happy to. I'm about this. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll mob with you to this, bro. I'll, I don't have to say a word. You don't need to give me anything. I'm just like I'm here because this is what I do, and that cracked open the shell of what was possible for me in that moment. It 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 cracked like I felt like tinglys go down my arms, like an egg as it mm. cracks and a yolk comes out, and and I was able to go to the gym and do heavy squats at one in the morning and just crush it because I felt animated by the spirit that Kobe Bryant embodies, yeah. represents. Yeah. And I think that that thing, I don't think that he would, it was good. It was good. I needed to get cracked. I was, I was drawn to David Goggins and Kobe Bryant in those times. Yeah. So do I think that Kobe Bryant regrets being a representation for proper overexertion? Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. Probably not, dude. Because I, think, <laughs> I fucking think when you get to the end of life, you're going to have to look back and be like, did I do? I, I would rather look back and be like, ah, I probably could have cooled the jets a little bit here and there than to look back and be like, man, I really wish I would have fucking tried harder. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or done more or oh. fucking put more of an effort forth. He never Fuck has to that. say that ever. Never. Never. I'd rather die. Like, <laughs> that's it. That's the death. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We're touching some shit right there. That was <laughs> felt it in my chest, in my chest. I love this shit. I love this shit. Fuck yeah, man! You want to want to sign off for the beautiful people? We got Inch Thirty Eight Productions coming out soon, very soon. Only a couple more pods until we're rocking, 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 y'all. Yeah, you can. Have, we'll give everybody a more thorough update very soon. Mm-hmm. Appreciate your fanhood, your patronage. The love, love everyone. Love you all. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Hit us on the DMs. If you want us to talk about anything, let us know what you want us to talk about. We'll we'll get, we'll, we'll, we'll we'll make it abstract. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you tell us to talk about. I'm sorry. It's kind of what happens here. I was like the first couple of seconds of the pod. I was like, all right, boots on the ground, hands in the dirt, farmers. And they were talking about fucking crazy shit every time. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> It's a gift and a curse. I'm sorry. It's just what's gonna. It's just what's gonna happen. I was like, "What are people dealing with politics? <laughs> people deal with that." I was like, "What are we watching? Are we watching anything? Not really. It's, damn it! You want to hear about the oh, Game of Thrones existential ideas I saw in a movie? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, man! Damn it! We're in space again. It's, like, oh, it's okay. It's what we're about here. This is our podcast, yeah. Give a fuck. I love it. Whenever we whenever we bring on guests, I think it'll be a little bit easier to stay a little more tangible and like real, real worldly. I'm going to interview them in mm-hmm. my interview and questions. We'll take them to the moon. Exactly. We'll take them to the fucking moon, regardless of if they want to go or not. This is going to happen. Yeah. More on that to come, for sure. We'll have a change of scenery here soon. More updates, more upgrades, more everything, more life. I fucking love you guys. We'll see you on the other side. Peace. Rolling through the city to the light show. Really ain't no telling where we might go. I just flipped the switch, I'm in my